we are back for another episode of Katawa Shoujo, and last time I remember, things were heating up. Met all five of the girls, maybe six girls, um, and things are good. I last person I met was Rin, who has zero arms and quite the sassy personality. And right now is not the time to like start getting infatuated, but I'm starting to feel feelings. So let's jump right into it. Let's get so much content out of the way so I can just, I don't know, marry someone. Ah, I'm just kidding. Okay, quietly back out of the room as I shut the door in front of my face, I whispered to myself, what an intriguing person. We're talking about Rin here, the armless, sarcastic, armless person. From inside, I hear a muffled sing-song voice. I heard that. Uh-oh. Whoa! What'd she hear? Came out of nowhere. Misha pops out of nowhere, who I had not heard approaching despite the completely empty hallway. She had certainly gotten to jumping distance of me without making a sound. Very creepy. Reminds me of Kenji and his nutty theory about global feminist conspiracy, but I pushed that thought aside. And there's Shizun. Okay, looking aloof. She couldn't have heard the remark that drew Misha's attention, but Misha's visibly excited. No wait, more importantly, who is in there? There's no club meetings today. She tries to curiously peek past me even though the door prevents her from seeing it anyways. What are you doing here? You took so long that we had to come back and check what was wrong. That's no good, Hichan. She wags her finger at me scoldingly. Found plywood, but everything else is still missing because you are tardy. Ah, I got the thing, so we're just needing to bring them. I think you're up to some mischief, Hichan. Who was in there with you, I wonder? Misha signed something quickly to Shizan, pointing to her own ear a couple times. She checks. Uh, she's in diligence and attitude, the insolence of daring to deface school property by sleeping on top of it must be too much to bear. Indeed, she stares at Rin, frozen right in place apart from the slight but noticeable trembling of her shoulders from suppressing rage, I'm sure. Instead of blowing up, she's in takes a couple of deep breaths, adjusts her glasses, and slams the door shut, trying to sign furiously at Misha. Maybe she did just blow up, but I can't understand it. She shoots a very loaded stare at me too, as if it was somehow my fault that Rin is sleeping on one of the tables. I hope she's not getting any funny ideas about the reason of my tardiness. Hello. Rin's voice comes from the other side of the door and it takes a few eye blinks to realize that she might have trouble opening it. Ah, I didn't even realize that. I open the door to find Rin directly behind it, looking at us with a half interested and sleepy face. Hello. Ms. Tessica. What do you think you are doing? You are absolutely not permitted to use school property for such a disgraceful activity. It sure is very crowded in here. I didn't know I was this popular. It's hard to say whether she's happy or unhappy about this turn of events. At any rate, she ignores Shizun and Misha's scolding, so they have no choice but to drop the issue. Shizun taps Misha's shoulders, points at Rin, and makes some quick signs. Popularity aside, please do not do that anymore. Anyway, how's your project going? Will you be done for the festival? Rin looks at them blankly, apparently at ease under the pressure. She seems cold stares putting on her. I keep wondering about that myself too. And? We'll think about it harder. As Misha signs her replies that she's in her face turns into an unsatisfied frown. Miss Tesco, please try to take this seriously. It'll be a disaster if the wall looks like someone threw up their lunch onto it. Rin nods assertively. We'll think more seriously. Misha actually giggles at that, but she soon doesn't. Not even after translation. She just shakes her head, takes the materials from me, and takes off Misha in tow. Rin frowns thoughtfully as she looks after the retreating student council duo. How rude! It's true that I must finish my project before the weekend. There will be a dire consequences if I don't. The end of the world as we know it. Like weekends usually are, but more dire. Much more dire. <laughs> Maybe I'll postpone my nap to unforeseen future. Uh, I like her. I'm about to ask what the project she was what she has and what the apocalyptic consequences but she walks back into the art classroom since you have nothing to do would you give me a hand that's awesome the paint can doesn't fit into my bag but i need it she kicks lightly at a huge paint can of paint that's lying on the floor next to the table she was sitting and sleeping on it lets out a dull clang being the gentleman i am i naturally pick it up it's very heavy yeah sure what do you need me to take it away and with that she takes off into the hallway me and the paint cane following since she's little choice since that's a little choice for either of us. The hallway is quiet now with she's in Michigan, so we le two leave towards the stairwell to the other end. Every 10 or 15, 20 steps, I have to change the can from one hand to the other, and the thin cuts, thin handle cuts into my pan. At least it keeps my arms from tiring too fast. 
Rin strolls beside me with an uneven pace that I have trouble matching, or maybe I'm walking weird because of the extra weight. It seems that one of us is constantly walking too slow or too fast. Can't figure out which. Two flights of stairs below, trouble appears in the form of a head nurse and his fox-like grin. Ah, Mr. Nakai, what a happy coincidence. Tezuka too, of course. He nods continu courteously to Rin, who does not acknowledge him back, and turns to me, and obviously it's me who he had some business with. There's something I forgot to mention on Monday. I nod and wait impassively because I can't begin to guess what he forgot. The feeling of the handle delving deeper into my skin doesn't make me feel enthusiastic about this interruption either. It's about your medication. Since you haven't been that long on your current medication, there might be some unexpected side effects, which might require adjusting dosages or even changing to another kind of medication. So we'll do a few tests regularly, but what I'd want for you is to keep on everything your condition that feels off, if you get what I mean. Nausea, headache, anything. And come see me if any something happens. Alrighty. So how are you? Everything's fine. I give up and drop the can to the floor before answering. Apparently this takes longer than my biceps can handle. I'm about to say something generic as an answer, but I realize how often I'm done lately. Other people have asked me that too, teachers and students, my parents, visitors, nurses, and doctors at the hospital. Everyone seems to be concerned about that. It's natural for a hospital, not so much for a school. Except this school. This is a small school, and both student base and faculty seem very tightly knit. At least that's the feeling I'm getting. This is not the kind of school that gets transfer students too often. The thought sends shivers up my spine, but I give a generic answer anyways. That's great! Also, one other thing. My sources tell me that you've neither been at the school track or even the pool, so I'd like to know if you're taking, taking up exercising as I asked. Of course I haven't, but this way of inquiring gives me the feeling that I should have been running my ass off the track since the very first day. Have you people been spying on me? Not as such. I just happen to know a few people, but that's not the issue here, so don't try to slip out of it. Well, I was actually doing some improvised weightlifting as an exercise. I pick up and lift the weight can up and down a few times like sad imitation of a bodybuilder, even though it's weighing down my arms painfully. Stupid grin disappears from his face for a second, then comes back like it was never gone. Tizuka, would you give us a second? The nurse grabs you by the shoulder without waiting for Wynn's permission, which he didn't need in the first place, and drags me aside. When I told you to exercise, I wasn't joking. I understand that you're still in your first week and all, but please don't ignore the importance of this. This got dark. The reason I'm coming down on you this hard is that habits are not easy to form. The more you slip and postpone, the harder it'll be. It's the same with everything, like dieting. Can you promise to be more serious about this from now on? Alright, you're pretty, you're pretty serious, so I'm going to be serious too. Yeah, I promise, definitely. He studies me for a moment, then shrugs, smiling again. <laughs> That's more like it. If you go to the school track tomorrow morning, you'll meet my spy, who probably has no qualms offering consultation to you if you want to jog a bit. Consultation? See you around. Bet you it's the no-legged girl, whose name is Emmy. So I should probably refer to her as Emmy instead of no-legged girl. He idly waves his hands and no answer. I walk to Rin, who has been waiting, idly leaning against the hallway, staring at the pale lightning fixtures in the ceiling. Lighting fixtures, not lightning. When I approach, she doesn't even move her eyes off them. Are you getting... Medications for your heart thingy? Are you listening? It comes out more accusatory than I intended, accidentally lashing out on her. But even so, I don't really want to start talking about it. I just met her. I don't know her. It's not her business. The nurse seems to be happily ignorant and confidentiality, too, talking about that kind of thing in public. It's not really Rin's fault, is it? I look up at her, suddenly feeling a bit guilty, but Rin is just staring past my shoulder quizzically, her head tilted like a bird's. <sighs> I don't want it so hard for me. It feels like there's some sort of inexplicable lock that prevents me from being more upfront about this. Yeah, they're for my heart. Will they make you better? No, not really. Just make me a little less worse. Rin keeps looking at me for a while longer. She neither says anything further nor displays any kind of emotion I can discern. I'm thankful she doesn't. I think I'm still not quite used to all this. The hospital is easy. I still haven't sorted my feelings about having to live a normal life with this di disability. We leave the main building. Rin leads, Rin leads us towards the dorm. We stop at a small patch of greenery in front of the dorm building. The dorm is built slightly elevated ground with a wall and a few trees that everyone has to circle around every time they come or go. It's probably the only inconvenient design of the school. A tree. The entire wall, made some sort of kind of bricks, as the building itself has been covered with some sort of painting. Most of the... Most... Of it, still mere sketches, quick lines drawn with black and white against the gray plastic that covers most of the entire length of the wall, but some places look a bit more finished. There are human faces, legs, and hands, I can't quite say what the painting as a whole might portray. Sacks of what seem to be paint cans are arranged in piles on the ground beside the wall. See, the left side is hardly off the ground yet. 
because I couldn't get in the mood yesterday, so I gave up and went to meditate instead. Then it was suddenly morning. By meditate, I think she means nap. I have to work on it, but the guys from our class are helping me with the negative spaces and face surfaces wherever, whenever, which is a problem. I like her because she's an artist and I like to draw too. It's easy to paint big areas if there are a lot of people with hands. The reach is better and it's faster too. She goes on a tangent of a tangent, waving a little with her arm or whatever there actually whatever that there actually is to demonstrate even though I got the point already. The white cotton her wrist sleeve flaps around and it makes me think it could look sadder than it does. No. But it makes me feel out of place like almost every tangible reminder of the student base's special properties has in its um the girl doesn't notice my dreary eyes, of course, or the fact she lost me a while ago. She just keeps on blabbering. So that's why I'm trying to figure out if there's something I need to figure out, and then figure out that out before it's too late and all hope's lost. Why would hope be lost? Because paint has to be painted, and then has to dry, and then has to be painted over with another kind of paint. It takes time. She finally stops, apparently thinks she's made some sort of statement that makes sense. I think it's best to start from the top. So this is your project? You did this? Yes, yes, all of it? Yes. Nice, but I stumble with my words suddenly feeling like I've walked straight into a minefield of political incorrectness. She does it with her feet. It's okay, you can say it. I probably won't get mad. I blush really hard. I don't really know what would be the right thing to say. If any, it feels that I'm way more sensitive than Rin is though. This is really awkward. Don't you want to ask? How do you paint without hands? See, I'm an easy person to talk to, right? With my feet. I almost guessed that already, but isn't that hard to do? You're good at guessing. Anyways, I don't think it is, but maybe I'm used to it by now. I can't get my mind around the fact that she could be an artist, but seeing how adept she was at using her feet to eat, I figure painting might not be a problem either. Neither of us has anything more to add to the subject. The afternoon light works well. I was afraid it would look too flat, but it's not like that at all. I think it's actually pretty interesting. I wanted to see what it looks like in dim light. Do you think it's flat? Eh, well, paintings tend to be flat. Not like that flat, you know, flat, like some people are, no substance, no meat where there should be some. I know a few girls, okay, I get it. <laughs> She's talking about boobs, I think. Okay, I get it, but I couldn't really tell. I'm not really good with art, I can't name many artists or artistic terms, so I don't really have anything to say. She shrugs her shoulders and at that, saying, suit yourself without saying that, and looks up to the sky as if trying to look for something up there. I didn't think I'd get any actual work done, but if you give me a hand with the paints, I could actually do a little before it's dark. I wanted to say get a halogen lamp like the ones they have at the sports track, but there aren't any. Rin sure is quick to recruit my help, as was Shizun, and it makes me feel that the festival is such a big project that every pair of hands is needed, especially when you don't have any hands. Why not? I'm not really sure if I can be any help though. Just mixing some paints, you can do that, probably. Do you have motor control problems, like, you know, those people who have some? Cerebral palsy, maybe? Not that I know of. I get it. Hard thing has nothing to do with that. She gives me a sly look for no reason. No, it doesn't. Let's do it then. So she sits on an empty wooden box that naturally picks up a wide rush between the toes of her bare right foot. I open a few of the cans and pour some of the contents in the shallow bowls for mixing. The thick paints flow lazily from the can to the bowl like syrup. I mix them, creating hypnotic looking swirls that melt away quickly to form a new monotune hue. Rin sets to work every now and then, asking me for a hand with something or the other. Finding different brushes is easy enough, but mixing the paints to the exact tone the girl is apparently seeing in her head is a frustrating ordeal. She wants precision down to the last milliliter before she is satisfied, but her instructions are obscure at best. Add half a splash of green. I crash to pick down the can of bright green. The other green. This green. I pour some of the other green into the mixing bowl. Now that's almost a whole splash. More white. Is green a good color to add? No idea. You're the artist here. A hint of smile appears in the corners of her mouth. Do you lack an opinion? No, it's just that I have no idea. It's okay, because I just got an idea. Add more white. With this exclamation, I pour a minuscule of white into the bowl and mix it. It looks slightly whiter. That's not good. It has to be like, like the color when you wake up and you know that you just saw the meaning of life in your dream, but you can't remember it. This girl is crazy. Maybe it's yellow. Despite the impossibility of mixing color like the change of seasons or any other nonsense that would be imposed on me, I find myself enjoying it more than I thought I would. <laughs> me too. Seeing a painting being born on the plaster of the wall feels like magic. I spend moments I have between mixing paints, crouching down to the paving, and just looking at her work. It feels slightly intrusive at first, like breaking some imaginary intimacy, but Rin doesn't seem to mind the, 
least bit. Maybe it's just in my head. Her entire present emits a completely different air as she patiently works the details, adding layers of paint on top of the other paint, steadily moving her foot across the wall to add new shapes. Quick interjection before we keep going the story here. Even though Rin was the last person we've met, she's definitely been the most characterized in, in the most sense of Hikai. Like, I've met Shizun and them, and it's been very superficial. Um, like... Nothing has been this descriptive yet in terms of any of the other girls, um, which is very interesting to me. I'm just wondering, I'm hoping, because right now Rin is like winning the front in terms of like most developed. Um, I'm just hoping and wondering if I'll get a chance to experience that with the other people. I'm not saying before I make a choice or anything, but I don't know. We'll see. When I manage to produce a passable mixture of paint, the rare smile on her face is oddly rewarding. Apart from a few words when discussing paint mixes, neither of us says a word for the longest time. Even those short discussions soon evolve into shorthand, both of us develop and use, developing and using a weird impromptu code words for various paint and hues, as if there was some need to converse words in breath and sound. And it's getting dark. We stare the light into the evening until it becomes too dark to paint properly. No. Okay. The sound of alarm pulls me out of a fitful slumber and an unpleasant state of wakefulness. I linger around the blanket for a few minutes, grabbing energy to rise while making excuses as to why I haven't. I honestly wouldn't mind staying here all day. School is surprisingly exhausted after a long pause. The culture stock still has not faded. I think. Dude, you just painted a wall with a girl with no arms. I think the culture shock is gone. Still, despite getting impressions, skipping classes is easy here, I don't think they are going to let me get away that easily, and the nurse is bound to keep breathing down my neck for the talk of exercising as well. So eventually, I do rise up, swallow the morning medication, and put on my old soccer clothing. Thanks to my condition, I was exempted to taking part of gym class at the Yamaka, so I didn't get issued a gym outfit. I'd order some cover, such a contingency, I'd order some to cover such a contingency, but wearing my old soccer clothes is kind of nostalgic. I can't use them for that anymore, so maybe I can use them to get a new life this way, a bit like me. So maybe they can get a new life this way. I can't read. I'm tired. and All I do is read physics textbooks. Sorry. <clears throat> After all, I'm going to start taking care of myself. I can't afford to slack around. I'll start with the basics. Basics include keeping the rest of my body in shape with what little I can, I can do to strengthen my heart. Maybe I can go back to something approaching a normal life, or at least something where I'm less likely to fall over dead at any minute. I'm surprised to discover that I'm not the only one present at the track. Not just that, but it's a face I've seen before. The prosthetic-legged girl, one who bowled me over in the hallway yesterday, is, oh, she, yeah, she's definitely the spy, is running on the track lately with a half-mechanical gazelle. What was her name again? It was a short one, but I can't remember. She seems to be running laps at a somewhat easy low per Prosthetic legs clapping rhythmically on the hard, tra hard, yeah, on the hard track surface. I wonder what reason she has for running this early in the morning. Maybe it's something akin to mine, and the nurse is opposing this poor girl to jog like she he is oppressing me. I certainly wouldn't be here if it weren't for my health, and his prompting me to do so. And even with things being like they are, it's only because I wanted to get it out of the way early. The fact that I would be less likely to encounter someone who would witness my pain pitiful attempts to get into shape was merely a happy accident. I leave, but it seems that my former assailant noticed me on her last lap. She waves at me cheerfully and jogs over. Twin Tails girl. Dude, her name's Emmy. Your name is Sasso, right? She grins, seemingly pleased that she'd remembered my name. You may not remember me. Emmy? I knocked you over in the hall yesterday. How could I forget such a blunt introduction? Emmy has the decency to look vaguely apologetic for a moment, for a moment before giggling. Yeah, sorry about that again. Hmm, well, so long as you don't make a habit of me, habit of it, I suppose I'll be fine. Great! I'm not sure she realized I was joking. So the spy consultant nurse... So the spy consultant the nurse is actually talking about. Is that actually you? That's right. Oh, I was expecting someone from the nursing staff, to be honest. What, are you saying I don't look like I could be a spy? No, this is more like a relief. I was afraid he would have someone to watch my every move. Unless you are here to do that. No, I'm here for my own reasons. The nurse just asked me if I'd seen a messy-haired kid transfer student who looks like he's kind of lost half around this track. So why are you down here? Emmy strikes a dramatic pose. Training? For what? Track. Ah, I see. You're on the track team, then. 
She nods enthusiastically. Yep, I'm one of the better runners too. And modest about it. Hey, you should join up. It's good exercise, you know. I think that much activity is probably out of the question for me. Nah, I'm not even sure I really like running all that much. Plus, I'm not just into organized sports, you know. It's true, I never really got that much into soccer. I mean, I'd run around with my friends and all. That was really the only reason I ever played. It wasn't for the glory around the field, that's for sure. Emmy seems to understand my meaning. I see, I see, not into the whole organization thing. But now that you're here, I guess we're gonna run together, huh? Uh, sure, I guess. Are you gonna warm up? Real men don't warm up. Oh, you should always warm up. That is so. Whoa, she scolds me enthusiastically and smiles and leans closer. I hate warming up too. She laughs suddenly. Heck, I don't even have to stretch my legs. Cause she doesn't have them. Oh, as to confirm her statement, she bounces up and down a couple times, giving a passing impression of standing on a pair of springs. Her leg blades seem to be quite elastic. Let's go. So we both take off around the track. I can immediately see that she wasn't lying about being good at running. She moves fluidly, throwing herself into the run with this sort of wild abandon. I find myself concentrated more on running properly. Hands spread, right? Something about hitting the balls of your feet rather than the heels. Um, trying to match my stride to Emmy's, but it's pretty difficult. Apparently I'm not very good at it. Maybe Emmy could help me with that sometime. I'm not feeling up to more than a couple laps today and slow to walk pretty quickly. Emmy keeps running and doesn't seem to notice. I've stopped until she passes me a second time. She quickly skids to a halt, breathing steadily in contrast to my somewhat gasping demeanor. Finished already? I hang my head ruefully. Yeah, I'm not in very good shape right now. Emmy nods and grins at me again. She seems to do a lot of smiling. Well, the important thing is that she started, right? Next time, you just have to try and hold out longer and then longer and then longer, and eventually you'll be great. I'll keep that in mind. But right now, I think I'm gonna have to go get ready for class. Shouldn't you? She shrugs unconcerningly. Nah, I got plenty of time. I know she's not wearing a watch. Are you sure? Another careless shrug. Not really, but I've got to finish my routine. See you later, Hiso. Yeah, see ya. I'm not sure whether this morning's experiment was a success or a failure, but I'll admit that I do feel slightly good about getting out there this morning. Like Amy said, I just need to keep at it in order to get better, right? Practice makes perfect, or something like that. It's nice at least to feel like I'm taking some semblance of control over my own health. I'll have to try to keep this up. I head back to the dorms to wash and change into my uniform, trying to resist the urge to take a really long and hot shower. I'm tired of all the running, but I want to unwind, but I don't want to break my silly routine of getting to school before the morning rush. After taking a long shower anyways, I dry myself and get out of the stall and put on my clothes. Out of somewhere, a shadow appears in the mist, looming and radiating malicious intent. Burst through the fog. Oh! God, Kenji. What are you doing here? What the hell? Are you scared me? What's your problem? I should be asking you that. I've been looking for you all over the place, dude. What do you mean all over the place, dude? I don't like these parts. I wanted to ask you if you've been looking for me stark naked, but hold my tongue back. I finally realized that I'm naked too, and I quickly hold up my shirt in front of me, but Kenji doesn't seem to notice a thing. His glasses are fogged up. But then, why doesn't he wipe them off? His vision so bad that he's per perpetually seeing through fog. You know, your room, and yeah, that's me. Hey, I mean, I still had to get up, though. Whatever, it's not important. Can I borrow some money? He puts an innocent face and then looks away, trying very hard to look casual. It doesn't work. He's as transparent as his window pane sized glasses. Talking neutrally like this, where nothing feels awkward. Actually, somehow it's even more awkward to be naked in front of someone when they can't see me being naked. To say nothing of the fact that he's naked as well. I try to brush out the feeling with a little success. Money? Sure. <laughs> awesome. Wait, why do you need it? Uh, can't you just give it to me because I had the goodwill to not run through your pockets while you were in the shower? I could have, but I exercised restraint. And in the end, isn't that the thought that counts? Come on, be a pal. That makes zero sense. It says, it's the thought that counts, I should withhold payment since his thoughts were so clearly impure that his intentions are probably more sinister since he can't tell me what they are. I say as much to him. I'm offended, man, but if that's your game, that's fine. I guess I have no choice. I want to order pizza, and I already have most of the coffee pizza. I just need help for the rest. Can I, I can get some of that pizza too, right? Nope. Are you serious? Yeah, I would give you some, but you have class and you don't have time to eat a pizza. What about you? I'm not going to class. I have to wait for the pizza, pay the guy, and then eat it. It's not that easy. It's a Obtain the pizza stealthily. If you don't, everyone will see you and the pizza, and they'll ask for a slice. It's a hard world out there. Everyone wants a piece. And you're left pizzaless in an unforgiving world. It's happened before, that's how I know. That kind of makes sense. Every day, I pay my vengeance, and that's what people who wrong me over a pizza. I will be there, ever vigilant. Henry strikes a dramatic pose completely without irony. But yeah, I only need 400 yen. Please, you're my only hope. I can't go outside and buy my own pizza. It's too far. 
I try not to go out unless it's completely necessary. Let me tell you that's what happened last time I went out without carefully planning it out in advance. I was outside, I can't remember what I was doing, something standing, maybe wondering how I got there. And then out of nowhere, it happened. Like a flash of light and he's splitting the sky like he split a sandwich into two equal pieces to make a more man able to hold and eat a bird crap on my head. This is the second most shocking thing of my life. I've, every time I'm talking about Kenji, I feel like this is how he talks, so I'm like speeding up like that. What was the first? He ignores me and keeps going. I want to grab him and shake him. Is he just trying to keep momentum? I'll go with that, even if it's more like he just didn't hear me. It was like in the openings of some sort of anime show, you know, like when there's always a part where the main dude is fighting his rival and they fly at each other and clash swords and it's like this huge dramatic colored anus, anus, auras in Zoom. The dyslexia, man, I don't, talk about a Freudian slip. It was like that, but with poo. Okay. See, I need some money. I only need like a thousand yen. I thought it was 400. Okay, what? I'll pay you back, I swear. You better, that's what it means to borrow stuff. I don't know. I I just don't know when I'll be able to pay you back. You have one week. Ah! Kenji winces, makes a noise like a dying cow, particularly disturbing given the fact his baton is conducting freely. What the F? You're not supposed to be so tight assed about money between brothers in arms. Men have it bad enough as is. Did you know that male porn stars only make about half of what female porn stars make? That doesn't mean anything unless you're a porn star. So maybe I am a porn star on the side, trying to make means ends and fight the female agenda. You can't even spot me in your own crumbs, you bastard. Nobody understands. Nobody! Wouldn't feminists be against pornography in the first place? That feminist agenda stuff again? This stuff is important. I can see that you don't give a shit. This is serious here. Feminists are dangerous enemy. Make no mistake. Take them lightly and you're gonna wake up in the morning with a knife in your back. BAM! Out of nowhere. How do you wake up in the morning if someone stabbed you in your sleep? Women are terrible at stabbing things. This guy, I don't I don't like him. I don't like his scenes. He's taking up. He's wasting my time. I thought you just said you don't take them lightly. Well, I mean you don't take them... Like, blah, 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 individual. This is... I don't like this. A day will come, blah, blah, blah. It's on now, mother effers. You're being ridiculous. No worldwide, blah. Okay, basically I'm contradicting him. And he's bringing up crap about Earth. I don't, I don't like his suit at all. Like this is wasting my time. <sighs> boo, boo. Must be crowd movement. I just give him the money. Thanks, Steve. We should go bowling later. Bowling, it's the ultimate sport. There's almost no woman in bowlers either, making it a manly sport. <sighs> this is the worst. Okay. We're out of that. That was that was the worst. I don't I freaking hate Kenji scenes and it's just like ate up two or three minutes of actual gameplay gameplay um I, I gotta get to class i'm the first person in class today although i think I'm a little bit too early then again staying alone for 20 minutes sure beats having to suffer that time with kenji do completely agree with you combination of fatigue frustrated and boredom starts making me feel very tired blackout for a sec waking up my head hits the surface of the desk rubbing my forehead realize that it's as good as reason i need to stay up for now and stop coming to class so early later Eventually I hear tapping outside and Lily's tall figure appears in the doorway. She's not in this class, she must have some other business. Maybe she's looking for Hanako. Lily stops at the door, looking hesitant as if she's a vampire who can't come in unless invited. I consider doing so because she looks rather lonely. Lonesome staying out there. She steps on her own accord though, after straightening her skirt and shirt collar, as if it was important to look prim when entering our classroom. Excuse me. She calls into the quiet classroom without probing with a probing delicate voice. I realize the silence might unnerve her because of her blindness, so I break it. Morning, Lily. Miss Hal, good morning. I didn't hear you coming. I wonder if she thinks it's suspicious I didn't say anything to her before. It's likely. If I were to tell her a big lie now, it would sink me. Well, I was already here just asleep until now. Oh, have you seen Hanako today by any chance? No, she seems to come in only after the bell rings or after that. Do you want me to tell her she something for you? No, it's fine. It's strange. I just think we're the only two people in the school right now. I didn't hear anyone else on my way here. I shouldn't have gotten up so early today, I guess. You're chastising yourself for doing something that other people should? Punctuality is a good thing. I think so, anyways. Very busy morning today. Festival is coming up soon. Today is the deadline for the event, registration, budget reports, and any other official paperwork. Could be that everyone is trying to complete for necessary forms at the last minute. Maybe that's why it's so quiet today. Ah, here comes Misha. 
Misha pops into the room with Shizu and as if on cue, shine with loudness that makes Lily visibly finch. Hi, Hichan. Hi. This is awkward. Look, it's the class representative. Hello. Lily smiles, probably amused by Misha or Shizu of the word look. Alright, morning. Of course, you're not the representative of this class, right? I am not. Lily seems more guarded in her answer to Shizun than she was with me the other day. I guess they really don't get along. Then I realized Lily might not actually know Shizun is present and she's trying to detect whether she is or not. To know who she's talking to. For all she knows, she's talking to Misha, but knowing that Shizun and Shizun are practically inseparable, she might expect Shizun being the one who's actually talking. Damn, how complicated. I decided to help Lily out for my own peace of mind more than anything else. You're here early, Shizun. You were here earlier than us. Misha puffs out her cheeks angrily. Why is she getting angry? Does she feel emotions on Shizun's behalf too? It's not we that weird though. Shizun didn't like my little comment. It's true, I was here earlier than them. So it's me saying that she could definitely be misinterpreted as anything, especially to Shizun who doesn't have the benefit of hearing tone to gauge intent. Before I can start weighing whether or not I should apologize, Shizun has already moved on. Class rep, it's a good thing you're here. We have to talk. Uh, hold on, I'm getting over time. Uh, I just wanna, I wanna get to the stopping point. I should have stopped with classroom. Festival is coming up in three days, right? Every other class has handed in their project reports and their events, even the first years, except you. Ha! There's still time to hand it in, isn't there? Today, the deadline is today. You're taking up time, aren't you? If I had my way, I'd have all the necessary paper ages ago. But someone had to say deadline, please extend it. Yes, that was me. Planning something to this scale is not a small task, and a week is too small a time frame to expect a whole class to work on such a complex issue completely. Do you want to know what's harder than distributing the funds for one class event? Handling the same matter for every class in the school and then some. The one who does that is me. Misha puts her hands on her hips and stands up straight while she's really getting into the role. Lily doesn't look like she's very amused, though. Hey, she's in. aren't you being a little too hard for her? There's still a whole day left. Please, so it'll be all right. Lily seems happy taking her side, but a bit conflicted I might not think she can take care of herself. If this is about the budget, then I'm disappointed you think that I've forgotten about it. I understand how important it is. Then can I have it, please? She's soon. She might not have it on her at this exact second. It's not exactly here right now. I asked two students to take care of it for me, students from my class. She emphasized the last dance to my surprise. She knows she's in Misha's effort to rope me into student council. I guess word must have gotten around. Now she's using Emma against she's in. This just gets better and better. It's your responsibility. A budget report isn't something that you should be delegated away as a class rep. It's your job to be on top of things. That kind of disregard for proper procedure is really just terrible. They completed it, being capable of doing so, but the students have been sick recently and they have not been able to come to school to give it back to me. If you want, I will apologize on their behalf for getting sick. Okay. Although Misha misses Lily's jet little jab entirely, she's and doesn't and seems to be torn between being offended by Lily's daring and jumping for joy and the prospect of, of a challenge. Lily, don't they live here at the school? It's a five minute walk, you know. What could possibly have that prevents them from taking five minutes a day drop off something that will affect the enjoyment of the entire class? Lily opens her mouth to say something, but she's in close to the gap between them and starts signing furiously, waving her hands around like an orchestra conductor. Misha tries his best to convey the same passion, but can't really seem to lose her normal cheerful tone. The result is interesting and somewhat surreal. What's with that attitude? I said that it's something you should be delegating away. It's something that you should... It's not something you should be dealing with. Are you the class representative or aren't you? Tell me the names of the two, two students. You should have a job. You can't even handle something this simple yourself. One form isn't the full extent of what I am supposed to take care of. Lily's tone is growing slightly impatient, but she's doing a good job of not letting Shizun see how unsettled she is becoming. She's playing her cards close to her chest. Shizun, on the other hand, wraps her fingers around cheerfully along the edge of her glasses, knowing Lily that can neither hear or see how excited she is. Dude, she seems awful. Of course you do so much class, right? It must be so difficult being you. Lee tightens her lip at Misha's words, clearly understanding the intent behind them, and even though Misha delivers them without a hint of sarcasm, which they were meant to have. She and Lily don't like each other. That much is clear, but this seems a little too much. It seems like Lily has had enough and is ready to push back. Whoa! Battle. This is kind of cool. I was actually just discussing the budget report before you came in. You must be very talented to have finished all your student council duties so quickly that you could track me down and make sure I don't forget my own. Are you accusing me of slacking off? It seems like you're confusing me with yourself. I like how it's Misha. I don't think so. I thought it would be a very difficult thing for me to do, comparing myself to you. You're right. The difference between us is like heaven and hell. 
and it's not hard to guess which one you might represent. The air between them ripples with heat and their emni emnimity. Emnity. Oh, you can see she's in panties. That's not. That's just ridiculous drawing. <laughs> Um, well, not really. They can't discuss it anymore, even though Misha looks like she's beginning to understand the real nature of this conversation. Michon, don't you slack off either. What are you talking about? Uh, aren't you taking part of the festival? You are, aren't you? Then I hope you're going to do a lot more than make sure it goes smoothly than this person. I understand why Shizun is getting mad at me. Uh, don't drag me into this. You know what? We're gonna find out what exactly decision I come up with next time because I'm just way over time. So, thanks guys for watching, and I'm gonna get myself out of this mess another day.